Welcome to my channel Daily Bulletin News. Chad makes a rescue with Jack, and then finds a clue, and the third time's the charm for Brady and Fiona. As Fiona begs Sander to forgive her at the Salem Inn, he picks up a pair of boxer briefs. Whose knickers are these? She flashes back to shooing Brady out of her bathroom window and smirks. Mumsy had a little dalliance last night. She lies that they met while getting lats at naughty sweet bits. Sander asks his name. Maybe he knows him. A pumped-up Alex finds Brady at small bar. He vents about Theresa, which he assumes is why Brady is back in the bottle. Brady insists he's just drinking club soda. Drinking scotch, Alex glibly breathes a sigh of relief that he doesn't have to call Maggie on him. They toast to being losers who didn't deserve a mention in Victor's will. Alex adds, and to Theresa, if I never see that woman again, it will be too soon. Brady uncomfortably sips. At the hospital, a devastated Stephanie tells Kayla that Everett died. She cries, feeling like she didn't do enough to save him. She should have realized sooner that Bobby was in control. She sobs as he recounts how Everett re-emerged to tell her he loved her, but she didn't get the chance to say it back. In Poplar Bluff, Chad kicks in a door in a nondescript hallway. In a near-empty room, John sits tied to a chair in front of a wall of windows. There's a gash over his left eye. Chad and Jack free him from his restraints. Groggy and confused, John says he thought he was still in Greece. Jack hands him his phone so he can call Marlena, who is learning from Steve that her husband is missing. In her room, Fiona is sure Xander doesn't know her new friend. She gets back to urging him for another chance to be the mother he deserts. Xander acknowledges that he's also hurt people and has had to beg for forgiveness. He respects that she's worked on her sanity and sobriety. So yes. I forgive you. She tearfully embraces him. At the hospital, Kayla invites Stephanie to come back to her and Steve's place. Stephanie says she's back in her and Chad's old apartment. Kayla doesn't like that she's there with all those memories. Stephanie knows Chad just wasn't ready to move on from Abigail. Even back then, maybe there was a part of him that knew she was alive. As Chad cases the room, John tells Marlena on the phone that he made his peace with Katharina's death. He'll tell her everything when he gets home. Upon hanging up, he asks why Chad and Jack are there. They explain about Abigail. At small bar, Alex tells Brady he'll be moving back to his apartment. He laments how everything he thought was his belongs to Xander now. Brady understands his frustration. When Alex brings up Theresa, Brady admits his head and heart have never been on the same page with her. He's just glad his head took the lead on this one, and he didn't get in too deep. Alex scoffs over himself being deeply submerged. Brady declares he's done with women, but Alex playfully wonders about Kristen. Brady says he and Theresa are toxic, but he and Kristen are radioactive. At the Salem Inn, Fiona asks Sander when he's going to claim his birthright. Maybe never, he responds. Victor treated him like dirt for years. Besides, Azara does just fine for both of them, and he's more than happy to spend his days with Victoria. Fiona doesn't think that sounds like him. He points out she doesn't really know him anymore. She knows he has a tendency to be self-destructive. He may call himself Xander Cook, but he's Xander Kyriakis, and he deserves to take his rightful place as Victor's heir. So go, claim what's yours. In her office, Marlena explains to Steve that someone hit John from behind while he was at Katharina's grave, which explains the blood on the note. The last thing John remembers is being dragged away before he blacked out. Chad shows John the video. The room they're in looks like the same one where the mystery woman is, and every other room is empty. Judging by the angle of the video, John agrees it's the same room. In Fiona's hotel room, Sander says she's given him a lot to think about and invites her to the wedding. He quips that Sarah keeps him grounded and sane, so it's in everyone's best interest that he marry her as soon as possible. If he takes over Victor's empire, he'll multitask. Fiona knows he can do whatever he puts his mind to. He tells her to feel free to bring a plus one. At small bar with a few empty glasses in front of him, Brady texts Tate that he misses him. He downs a drink and leaves. In the Titan office, Alex sadly looks at his nameplate and framed photo of himself and Theresa. He trashes both of them and packs up his desk. As he's about to leave, Xander arrives. There's some awkwardness before Xander invites him to stay on in some capacity. No, thank you. Alex firmly states.